the Wuhan virus situation is admittedly getting out of hand. And I want to start by saying a couple days ago, I said, everybody remain calm. You know, these we, we, we've had stories like this before. We have viruses. You get swine flu, bird flu. And my understanding is the flu is still more dangerous than the Wuhan virus. That being said, I also pointed out that we don't need to worry about these, these viruses that are really shocking, that draw attention, because these viruses that make, make themselves known are bad viruses. We catch them quickly, we quarantine, and we only need to worry if they have a long incubation period and are airborne, for instance. Well, as it turns out, it seems that the incubation period is two weeks and the virus is airborne. So <laughs> this means that some people are speculating there could be tens of millions of people who are already infected carrying and spreading this virus without knowing. So actually, it could be a little scary. But I, I, I still will say, you know, in any circumstance, remaining calm is the most important thing you can do. There is now, I think, another confirmed case. There's, I think, 63 suspected cases now in the U.S. It's not that big of a deal so far. The presumed mortality rate is around like 2%. So it's, it's I, I think it's not even as bad as the flu. So there is a ton of media hype. You know, you're going to get all these stories. The big story right now, the lead, I don't want to bury it. U.S. prepares to evacuate all 1,000 of its citizens and diplomats from Wuhan as coronavirus death toll reaches 41. Keeping in mind, Wuhan and many other cities are now under a, a, a very harsh quarantine the past stories we saw and the photos are, are, are getting scary, man, were people like fighting over food in supermarkets. One quote given to the BBC is that it feels like the end of the world. Well, maybe if you live in Wuhan or the surrounding cities, but I, I got to say living over here in the Philadelphia suburbs, it kind of feels like everything's fine. And, you know, we just had what, what, what do we have last night? We had uh, Chick-fil-A. Yeah, I actually went and got Chick-fil-A. Love it. Everything was fine. Went to the store. No big deal. The worst thing that happened to me was that the people at Lowe's were mean. So no, the world is not ending. It doesn't feel like the end of the world. I can understand why people in Wuhan would feel that way. But I will say, I got, I, I got, to, I got to express a little concern here that the U.S. is going to evacuate a thousand of its citizens from Wuhan, which is under quarantine. Is that a good idea? If, if, if people have this, this new disease in Wuhan, you're like, let's get them all and bring them to our country. Maybe, maybe we should just make sure they're safe and comfortable where they're at because they're under a quarantine. And I was also curious as like, how do how do you violate that quarantine? I guess U.S. sovereignty supersedes Chinese quarantine. Doesn't seem like a good idea, does it? Am I wrong here? Look, man, I want to save these people's lives. I want to save everybody's life, American or otherwise. And I care for these American citizens. They're my 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 national brethren and sis, sisterin, whatever. I don't know. The point is, uh, maybe it's not safe to bring people who are in a quarantine to our country. But far be it from me. I'm not an epidemiologist or a virologist. I don't know how this stuff works. Um, maybe it's going to be fine. Maybe they can test them. The problem is people I think are like asymptomatic for two weeks. So they could be like, this person looks healthy and then they bring them here. And then all of a sudden, like everyone on the plane is sick. So it could be spreading pretty quick. Let's read a little bit about this, this evacuation, see what's going on. And then the bigger, the big, big update from yesterday, 35 million people now under quarantine. And I could be wrong about this. So fact check me, but someone, I, I saw this going around that it's like the biggest quarantine in the history of the world. Keeping in mind that if that's true, maybe it's not true, but look, we have more and more people every year. So of course the quarantines will be bigger the more people live in a city. Like if you only had a million people living in Wuhan, they'd be like, we had a quarantine of a million. Now Wuhan's 11 million. So it's a bigger quarantine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like it's, it's, it's the worst disease ever. It's actually, my understanding, not that big of a deal relative to like the flu or whatever, but keeping in mind it could mutate as it spreads. Let's keep an eye. Let's see what the story says. The U.S. government is planning to evacuate citizens from Wuhan. They're arranging a charter flight on Sunday to bring its citizens and diplomats back. The city, which is a population of around 11 million, is considered the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak and has been placed, excuse me, and has been placed effectively on lockdown since Thursday. Roughly a thousand Americans are in Wuhan. Now we got some crazy photos here, man. This is not for the faint of heart. Check this out. Wuhan is thought to be ground zero of the new disease and has been placed on lockdown by Chinese authorities. The photos and videos coming out of Wuhan are terrifying. People collapsed in the street. See, here's the thing. China's probably lying. While I don't want to plant any conspiracy theories and I want to urge calm, I think it's important to look at historical precedent to how a lot of countries deal with major disasters. Like in Japan with Fukushima, they lied. Okay, well, that's my understanding. I got to be careful. It's, you know, my understanding is that they were lying about the severity of the problem. Chernobyl, 
They Russia lied. OK, so if there is a massive disaster, these countries don't want to take responsibility for it. They're going to they're going to lie about it. So when you see these photos, of people collapsing in the street, I got to tell you, man, there's a lot of photos and videos of people collapsing in the street. And I'll be honest, the flu is happening all the time. How often do you see people collapsing in the street? How often do you see videos going viral of people walking around in hazmat suits because of the flu? Nah, man, I've had the flu before. You know, what I did. I, I got under a blank. I got under a bunch of blankets and I was shaking and sweating and drinking Gatorade. And now and then uh, like two days later, I was best as, as good as good can be. You know, I got over it in a couple days. I was I was, you know, young when I, I got, had the flu in a long time. I think I was like uh, 19 or 20. So, you know, striking young chap of great vigor. No problem. It looks like from the stories we're hearing, the people who are dying are, are older. Right. And that kind of makes sense because people who are older or really young and have weaker immune systems are more likely to be susceptible to viruses and, you know, weaker immune system. We get it. But these photos look like middle aged people wearing suits collapsing in the street. Now, we're also hearing that the doctor or a doctor who was working on a doctor dies in Wuhan as the number of infected grows. And we have the bigger story about the 35 million uh, quarantine. The Hill is concerned it could backfire, saying some health experts worry China's widespread quarantine could make a bad situation worse. Well, I don't understand how, but let's read and see what they have to say. The Hill reports, as China has quarantined 35 million people in an effort to contain the deadly coronavirus, health experts worry the lockdown could be ineffective and possibly backfire. Restrictions were, play, were, were put into place Friday, just one day after China restricted travel in and out of Wuhan, the city of 11 million people where the virus started, yada, yada. Uh, so, so this date this is out of date. This is absolutely out of date information. I, I saw some reports the quarantine is now up to 40 million people. This was actually the the, the latest I could find on the quarantine. Uh, well, using cursory Google search, to be honest. But uh, the, the death toll, my understanding, is actually 41. And I think we're seeing this here from, from the Daily Mail. So uh, the quarantine is probably larger, but I thought this was relevant because there's, a, there's concern over a backlash. They say, health, ex- health experts tell the Washington Post, that locking down a region like China's Hubei province could make things worse. Quarantining a region locks the infected together with the uninfected. It increases the burden on authorities, and it is nearly impossible to enforce. And experts say it, ca- it can cause citizens to detru- distrust the government, prompting them to refuse to report their symptoms, further exacerbating the outbreak. Well, I don't know about China. I do know that when Ebola broke out in, where was it? Was it, uh, which countries was it? Ethiopia? Nigeria? I can't remember. But a lot of the people there were superstitious and thought the government agencies were lying to them so they wouldn't report symptoms and they would hide or even break out of medical quarantine. So yes, distrust in the government or fear, okay, is going to result in, in full on panic. One of, the, one of the problems with the quarantine is that, listen, man, there are a lot of people who might be infected and they don't care. They want to live. So they're going to be like, screw your quarantine. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to risk myself. I'm going to live. And so they put everyone else at risk, you know, fleeing. They say this, China has halted transportation links in and out of Wuhan, as well as 13 other areas across the central part of the country. Again, there is updated information on this story. This is from last night. They're doing it because people who are in political leadership always think that if you do something dramatic and visible, you'll gain popular support. They couldn't have any sound public health advice. The Post reports, that in the U.S., mandatory limits on movement for residents in cities or regions have received little serious consideration in planning for disease outbreaks. In a 2007 report, the CDC, uh, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, on responding to a flu pandemic, experts made no recommendation to use mandatory lockdowns, even in the event of a Category 5 outbreak, one of the most critical in which 2% of those diagnosed with the infection die. Wow, that's terrifying because that actually, that's what it sounds like in, uh, with the Wuhan virus, 2%. Instead, the report said authorities should rely on voluntary isolation of infected and uninfected people, as well as limiting activities in schools, mass gatherings, and encourage people to work from home. Here's the reason why I think it's better to not quarantine in certain circumstances, agreeing with them on this one, is that you want people to feel like if they're sick, they can come to you for help, not to be afraid you're going to lock them up because they're going to die. So if someone gets sick, you want to say, come on in, we're going to do our best to keep you alive and protect everyone. So you create this quarantine, this panic, and they're going to be people who might be symptomatic, freaking out, thinking they'll be trapped here and they'll try and run. They'll try and escape. You do the opposite and say, if you feel symptomatic, feel free to come to us and we'll give you treatment to save your life. And they're going to be like, we better go to the hospitals to be safe. You see how it's kind of like a reverse psychology thing. But over in the US, woman in Chicago becomes second confirmed case of coronavirus. 
uh, after she returned from Wuhan. 63 people with symptoms are tested nationwide, including four in New York. As I stated earlier, airborne, long incubation period. These people were on planes for how long? You're coming from Wuhan to Chicago. What is that, 12 hour flight? Coughing, breathing, all those germs circulating through the, the, yeah, the, the, the air in that plane. It's uh, pretty scary, but all of those people on that plane could be infected. So here's what's really scary about the virus is they're, they're saying that it came from like a snake in an exotic meat market, which means that no humans have an immunity to, immunity to this because it's a, it's a, it, it just recently jumped from animal to human. There's also fear that because it's, it, might, it may be spreading so rapidly that it could mutate and then become even more deadly. So apparently this has all the makings for uh, total disaster, I suppose. Let's uh, get rid of whatever that video is. They say the second U.S. case of the deadly coronavirus has been confirmed in Chicago. On Friday, the CDC announced the patient is a 60-year-old woman who traveled to Wuhan where the virus originated. She arrived at O'Hare Airport uh, on January 13th, meaning it has been 11 days since she returned to the U.S., but did not begin experiencing symptoms until several days later. Health officials say the woman appeared to be well and in stable condition. She is in isolation, but it wasn't revealed which hospital she is in. Meanwhile, the city of Wuhan is on lockdown, we know. So here's this, this, this image we have. I wonder if I can make it bigger. There we go. So confirmed case. These are, these are the tests for the 63 patients suspected in uh, Raleigh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Patient arrived at Raleigh, Durham on the 23rd and has passed through the city of Wuhan. You have Tennessee Tech University, student under isolation. Texas A&M, you've got four uh, suspected cases. So you get it. I'm not going to read through all of these, but you can see that in the Bay Area in LA, if it turns out these people actually have the Wuhan virus, this is actually, I mean, I could be wrong about this. When SARS happened, I was a young teenager, so I wasn't really, I didn't really care or pay attention. But this seems pretty serious. Now, these, these could just be suspected cases. It could be nothing. We only have two confirmed cases. So we have confirmed in Chicago and, we're, and confirmed in Everett, Washington. But that's, that's a wide range. And if those people were on planes with a bunch of other people with a long incubation period, man, this is bad news. So the report from Daily Mail says Chinese New Year celebrations have been canceled. Japan has confirmed its second and fifth patient, second case and a fifth patient diagnosed in Thailand. Footage has emerged reportedly showing military personnel guarding a train station. This is nuts. So, so here's the thing. Here's the big conspiracy theory. There's a bio lab in Wuhan. Um, a lot of speculation. Take it all with a grain of salt. We're going to talk about it. Again, I do not like to, to speculate beyond what it might mean, but there is reports of a biolab. In 2017, there was a story. There was great concern from the international community that the biolab would have a breach and a pathogen would escape. Other reports saying that the biolab is about 15 miles from the epicenter, so it's not super close, but some people are concerned. Here's the thing I want to say about that. It sounds, it sounds amazing, right? This crazy story of a, a biolab breaching and the government goes nuts and this deadly virus, they're lying about it. Come on, man. How often does stuff like that really happen? You know, you know, it's more likely somebody was eating a diseased snake. Like, like that's that, that's a story. There's like other stories about like bat soup or something like you take a bat and you put it in soup. It's substantially more likely that a bunch of dirty humans were eating dirty food and a dirty virus jumped from a dirty animal to a dirty human. And that human coughed on a bunch of people and other people coughed and everybody's coughing and everybody's getting sick. As much as it would be fun to believe that a bunch of like Chinese officials are like in a room right now going like, we have a level five breach. The disease has escaped. No, our bioweapon is now plaguing the earth. And it's like the apocalypse. I, it's much more likely that somebody ate a dirty snake, got a bunch of people sick, and it's not going to be the worst thing in the world. The media is hyping everything up. And then come a month from now, people are going to be like, oh, yeah, remember that Wuhan thing? Oh, that was funny, wasn't it? It'll get a Wikipedia entry because the media talked about it. So it's deemed more relevant than other instances of, say, the flu. But my understanding is that the flu is more deadly. And because the flu happens all the time and there's flu season, we don't get sensational stories about the end of the world. And because there's no sensational stories, governments don't panic and overreact to try and gain public support. And you don't see major lockdowns over the flu, even though the flu is seriously deadly. You see how the, you see how the media plays the game? However, 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 I do think it's important to say you don't want to have an optimism bias, right? The story I always tell is that there's like this urban legend, it could be apocryphal, where a, 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 a bank security guard was standing there as he watched three armed men in ski masks come into the bank and he did nothing. And they walked up to him and said, give us your weapon. And he was like, oh, and he did. And then later they asked him like why he didn't try and stop them when they came in. And he said, I couldn't believe it was actually happening. It's the optimism bias. 
that you think it's not going to happen. It can't happen to me. Listen, man, plagues happen all the time. Epidemics happen all the time. Catastrophes happen all the time. And governments sometimes play around with things they shouldn't. And disasters happen like Chernobyl. Okay. That was a major disaster. Fukushima was a major disaster. Granted, Fukushima was, you know, a natural disaster, which exacerbated a big problem. But it is a serious possibility that China has, you know, made a major blunder. And we're looking at a very serious outbreak. So I'll tell you this. You don't want to panic, but you don't want to underestimate the real risks you face. So here's what I tell people. That's what I said last time, right? Don't let anyone shame you into not taking care of yourself and your family. To me, it is absolutely insane that like, I jokingly bought some like emergency food. It's like dry food, good for a couple of years and some water supplies. And then I had friends and like people online laughing, saying Tim's prepping and all this other stupid stuff. And I'm like, don't care. Literally don't care what you think. I do not care. No, I'm not stockpiling a bunker full of canned beans. Oh, I got a, I got a little box full of like dry food that's good for a couple of years. And I got some, some, you know, five gallon jugs or whatever, some bottled water we put in the closet. That's about it. And the way I tell people is like, nobody freaks out when you go buy a first aid kit, but you rarely ever use it. You know what I mean? I think it's, I think it's rather terrifying that people, like there's actually a stigma over having emergency supplies. Like, isn't that nuts? So don't let anybody shame you for that. This could be nothing. And it likely is. Man, I can't tell you how many times there have been these big media scares about the end is nigh. And then people rush to Walmart to buy bottled water. I remember something happened in 2014. I can't remember what it was, but it was like some outbreak or some something. And then like, you know, uh, family was calling like, did you hear about this? And so we went and bought bottled water. Like, oh man, hey man, I'll tell you what, the media might be overhyping it for clicks. It's always good to have some bottled water stored. Okay. Or a big, big thing of water. Cause I'll tell you what, if a disaster actually happens and look, sometimes tornadoes happen, sometimes earthquakes happen, sometimes hurricanes happen, droughts happen. Okay. Civil unrest happens. It's good to have some supplies. But I'll tell you another funny story. When Fukushima happened, I was in Los Angeles when the disaster struck. Potassium iodide was gone from every store within, in that first day. So when, when there's a radiation outbreak, one of the concerns is that uh, radioactive uh, iodine will be, in, you'll, you'll ingest it and it will get into your thyroid and, and cause you problems. So what people do is you take potassium iodide pills, which basically fills your thyroid's quota of, of, of iodine so that it doesn't take in the radioactive particles. No one needed it. There was no need for it, but everybody certainly went out and bought it. So basically what I'm trying to say is, I think the conspiracy theories are always fun. Like in this instance, I know there's a serious issue, but people, you know, look, life is boring. Okay. So when something like this this happens, people are looking for something more exciting in life. But the reality is somebody ate a snake and then coughed on somebody else. Okay. It it could change. I could be wrong, but Occam's razor suggests it's a simple solution. This, This kind of stuff happens. You had bird flu, you had swine flu, SARS, MERS, whatever. These things happen. Okay. People, people eat monkey and then people get monkey disease, you know? So it's probably nothing. It could be serious. Take it seriously, but don't panic. That's the best way I can put it. We'll see what happens as the story develops. Stick around. I'll have more updates, you know, as this this thing uh, happens. The latest news to reiterate, the U.S. is going to evacuate its uh, citizens and diplomats. I don't know if that's a good idea, but whatever. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.